ST has just unveiled the first samples of the new STM32F7. That's the world's first Cortex M7 based 32 bit MCU. Renault Gozero is the company's high performance STM32 marketing manager. So, what are the headlines for you? The STM32 F7 series is a further extension of ST's leading 32 bit microcontroller, STM32 platform, which offers over 500 uh, part numbers to address all developer needs. From entry level devices requiring ultra low power to high processing devices embedding a large amount of memory and a numerous number of connectivity options. So what's going to get developers and customers excited? What's new here? Before talking about the new features, it's good to understand what all problems they are solving. Developers are challenged with um, time to market and we wanted to remove the need for them to optimize their code for resources and performance. What is really to get developers excited is the step up in performance, the quantum leap from the F4 series, which is the previous performance champion within the Cortex-M market. Let's take a look at a demo. Here we have an STM32 F439 evaluation board. And here we have the exact same board that we can reuse since it's pin-to-pin -pin compatible with an F7 device on it. So here I will uh, run a ray tracer demo, which is a 3D, 3D sorry, uh, picture computation with high computation in the background using DSP floating point units. So I'll start both demos and we will compare the computation time between an F4 running at 180 MHz based on Cortex M4 core to an F7 running at 200 MHz based on Cortex M7 core. We made it easy for developers to take advantage of the performance boost thanks to pinout and code compatibility between F4 and F7 series. And we also um, implemented a completely new set of peripherals which include a dual clock domain. Dual clock domain will allow developers to reduce the system and CPU speed independently from the peripherals, the communication baud rate in the systems. And this will allow customers to reduce power consumption. But does that increased performance come at a price? And that price is power efficiency. So we reach this step up in performance with no compromise on power efficiency. We achieve the exact same dynamic power consumption, meaning executing code from embedded memory with seven core marks per milliwatt on both F4 and F7 uh, uh, series. And we kept the exact same low power modes with stop mode down to 120 microamps, typical, with all SRAM and context saved. Now, I know you believe this is the smartest STM32 ever created. So what's so innovative about it? Being smart is not about brain size, it's about connecting the right neurons at the right time. In the case of the STM32 F7 series, it's about embedding the right features and interconnecting them the right way around the core to deliver the smartest STM32 uh, ever. So we have implemented two um, zero-weight execution acceleration. The unique ST-ART accelerator, which allows zero-weight execution from embedded flash, and an L1 cache, which allows performance from either internal or external memories. So you have a step up in performance with no resource limits now. We also implemented an AXI 64-bit wide bridge to multi-AHB uh, matrix, where you have different masters, general purpose DMAs or dedicated DMA controllers, or a graphic accelerator that will have access to a scattered SRAM architecture to exchange efficiently data over the system. Now, I know this whole project was in close collaboration with ARM, so let's go and have a word with Thomas Onsergay, who's a senior product marketing manager at ARM. Hello. Thomas, thank you so much for your time. Interest. Tell me a little bit about how this collaboration between your two companies came about. Yeah, sure. I think it all started with a, with a shared vision and also starting with asking us a hard question about the next generation of product in terms of connectivity, intelligence, user experience. I think the outcome was we, we need to deliver together a huge boost in terms of performance. And the good thing is HST has a, has a very good track record in terms of delivering high performance, like the STM32F2 or the F4. 
And we, the project really benefited from the early involvement of ST, uh, getting feedback on the previous generation, discussing performance targets, adding, improving features. I think all in one was a, a great common goal to, to deliver the highest performance processor for MCUs. And how is the market benefiting from this partnership? So I think the, the highest performance we deliver together is of great value for both the, the developers and the end users. I mean, think about uh, functionality, which used to be split across MCUs and DSPs, cannot be merged, okay? reducing complexity, size, power, and cost. Um, also in terms of software productivity, which is very important, uh, this extra room for, of performance for innovation, uh, we have also great software platform, like, for example, Java or the ARM embed, which are all well proven. And, and finally, spending much less time on optimizing. Okay? In the end, getting more compelling products to the market and even faster to the market. Renault, just turning back to you, what are the target applications for the STM32 F7 series? So the STM32 F7 series will address a broad range of applications, from medical to industrial to consumer applications. Um, for instance, it could be uh, industrial gateways, uh, it could be um, medical devices requiring an, a an HMI, or a motor control application where real time is very important. It could be also uh, power eff efficient controllers for the Internet of Things type of devices where you need um, more connectivity as in the past and also uh, enough performance and DSP capabilities for uh, rich and advanced HMIs where audio and graphics are involved. What about the ecosystem and support? The uh, STM32 F7 series will benefit from uh, the market leading STM32 ecosystem, including STM32 F7 Cube, uh, our boards such as Nucleo, Discovery Kit, Evaluation Board, plus all the solutions from our partners. Okay, so you've successfully got all the developers watching this excited, so when can they get their hands on it? Okay, so right now we are selecting uh, a limited number of uh, customers who can start playing with the product. Uh, but beginning of next year, we'll expand broadly uh, the number of customers that will have access to the product. So even the very first developers who started now, when they are ready in production, early Q2, will have a product in full production from ST also. So what's your dream outcome for the series? Uh, we wish the product to be part of the next most innovative and smartest application in the embedded world. Well, Renault and Thomas, thank you both for your time and the, and the very best of luck to the STM32F7. Thank, thank you.